early days when we used to play backyard parties on these weird little like dive bars or whatever. I think a lot of the early punk bands in East LA weren't even playing fast. They're more like kind of like the Pistols and kind of the Ramones, which the Ramones weren't even that fast. We get up on there and we have what, our, our suits, stuff, yeah. yeah. Red weird bands, cruise. I mean, you know, rosaries, crucifix, whatever. We're just like, don't we don't fit. People would just be standing there going, what the fuck are these guys? They didn't understand what we were doing, and we knew what we were doing because we wanted to. We wanted to be different. You know, people consider us punk. Some say we're hardcore. People say different things, but we just think of ourselves as just a band. We don't like to be category in here's punk or you're hardcore, or you're this or you're that. You know. We just like to be ourselves. We start playing and just cans come flying at us. And we're like, okay. And I see guys from my school and girls like, you guys fucking suck. I'm like, okay, we're doing something wrong or right. I don't know. And then Art said, uh, yeah, keep throwing your cans. We got your fucking money. They stopped throwing cans. They started realizing, well, these guys are kind of an attitude. I was born in Texas, El Paso. We migrated out here, but we, we went through the the trials and tribulations of, of moving around like about six, seven times before we settled in, you know, up in City Terrace. Where I live was near Atlantic and Whittier, and actually, um, when they had the Whittier riots, I can get on the roof where I live and you can just see all the fire and smoke. Back then, it was pretty dirty and, and pretty, you know, it wasn't a pretty place, you know, our families were struggling, whatever, but, you know, we, when we started all hanging out together, it kind of like that became our family. Mike brought Tracy over. Well, he was telling me about Tracy already because he was going to Garfield at the time. So I started hanging out with this guy, Robert, at school, and he went to his house and he had the dolls, he had the pistols, he had the Ramones, he had all the stuff that I never even heard of. And then we jammed and played one of his, his uh, songs, Death Breath, and then that's how it all started. You know, before the band actually got art in the band, Mike's like, oh, you gotta come to this party and check out this singer, because we needed a singer. You know, we started out as a three-piece, long hair. Mike, I knew before, Mike will always follow and tag along. He was like 14, and I was like 17, 18 at the time. So we went to go check out Art and Backyard Party. They're rocking out. That's when you had your little scarves on your microphone. Oh, yeah. And you're like around like <clears throat> Mick Jagger, and they're all jammy. But I mean, it was cool because these guys can play, you know? And so we're like going, hmm, you know? And then Mike kept saying, hey, we should get Art in the band. <laughs> With the band I was, I was in, I was, I was seeking the next step, which is originals. It was time to, to get out of the box. So when I got on The Undertakers, they had songs like Great Digger, Rosie Cross, which was like slow Black Sabbath stuff, you know, with these crazy beats. And I was, well, you know, bring graveyard music. And so I would bring stuff like uh, Generation X over. Come on, I want to do something like this. Let's do stuff like this, you know. We started going out to clubs, and then I started tripping out on that. So then I started writing originals that were more uh, energetic. My thing was I was a big Black Sabbath fan. So why not take the creepiness and make it faster? So we just I just started writing faster songs. We didn't get out much in the beginning, early time in the early 77 or whatever, to see bands. We got to see X, Black Flag, and the Stains off of Soto Street, and I forgot where the place was at. But this is like early 78 or something, and they were just starting out too. We used to have long hair, you know, everybody's like, oh, the Ramones, long hair, because that's what we started getting into. Okay, what are we going to wear, leather jackets? Art's like, no, black suits. You guys are called The Undertakers, so why dress punk? But you know, we, but, took, we took a picture in the graveyard, <laughs> and, and then Tracy's head was still there with a the, with the ponytail, right? That's off the, the 45. The Calvary was like, you know, the biggest cemetery in East LA, you know, so like, where did you do pictures? The Calvary. After a while, playing at the Vex, people from Hollywood were coming yeah. up to go check that, us out. To that see that was a whole on. melting pot right there at the Vex. Now we now we had a place where we could invite people from a Hollywood scene. The Hollywood crowd was a lot different than the East LA crowd. The East LA crowd, once they got into us, they knew who we were. When we went to Hollywood to play, you get the wet back thing and then go back to Mexico thing, you know, because they did, they, I, I don't know. You know, that, that never affected me though, I'll tell you the truth. I, I didn't give a fuck. I didn't care what what they thought and what they said. You know, I was out there to just do, do a gig and, and play play our stuff. You know, when we first got out in the band, I had most of the lyrics. But what happened is that I would give him the lyrics, and he would redo them. 
to make it. I would change them a lot because to make it his style because I wasn't sing when we first started. It was only three of us, so yeah. I would be singing. But when we got art in, it's like you know what? We got a singer now. Let him I, do the singing thing and let us just work on the music. That way, at least his power would come out of it instead of like, oh, don't do it. You got to do it like this. You know, it was more like. Do what you, do what you think you would do to make it sound like you to make it sound with the band to make it more you know that would click together and it, it did work. There was a lot of criticism, but you know what? When, when I said all that paid off, we went to the studio and we done the album. And, and I mean, it just everything came together, man. We recorded in three days. I think. In three days. So so why did it take twenty some odd years for it to come out? No, well, because after the band kind of disbanded, the, the tapes just sat in limbo and uh, nobody wanted to touch it. I was going to shows, I was going to punk shows, and, and uh, Brian from uh, Grand Theft Audio, he expressed some interest in uh, putting that CD out. Looked like it was going to happen at one point, and then he changed his mind. So I, I, know I got disappointed, and I had a dad tape of a mix down, and I think I was drunk one night. And, and I was just like all pissed off and I threw it in the trash. So about maybe a year or two years went by, he expressed that he was interested in putting it out again. And so I went all over the place looking for that dad. I, I didn't remember right away. Eventually, you know, we, we wound up, he wound up getting the, ori the, the original one inch master and, and it, all, it all worked out. Nobody knew who, who we were for a long time. The review came out in, in Maximum Rock and Roll. The reviewer said, if we would have had that CD out at the time. Actually, the record, at the time, the record would have came out when it should have came when out. When it should have came out back in 81 or 82, we would have been just as well known as you know, the other band, the Adolescents and the, a lot of the Orange County bands that are out there. And but that's that, the whole, that's the whole mystique about the band. We're just in, in the moment. We're just being us. It's, it's, it's like a unique treasure that for the historical music scene, at least LA, is, is, is the Undertakers. Very odd, uh, it's unsung heroes, man.